Well, hello everyone. Um, I had my books in a nice neat pile, but Abigail decided to visit. Whoops. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm here with another book haul. Now I know uh, I'm supposed to be on like a, a small book ban, uh, but that got shattered. So why try, right? Um, so some of these books uh, have, are from Book Outlet. They had their $7.99 sale on Canadian prices for all their paperbacks and their hardcovers. And uh, usually that sale happens, I don't know, maybe two or three times a year or so. So I did stock up and I got some from Amazon. And then, uh, nice and comfy. Um, maybe I'll join her after. Uh, and I also discovered a new website um, and it's UK based and it's called Awesome Books and they sell uh, new and used books and uh, the shipping's relatively decent. Um, I can get some used books for five, six, seven dollars uh, Canadian and I think it's three pounds fifty to ship the first book and then subsequent books after about a pound each to ship. So it's pretty um, pretty reasonable the shipping. And uh, I, I've been trying to find these certain books for a couple of years now. They're on Amazon, but they're uh, very expensive because they're shipped from the UK. The shipping's expensive. The books are expensive. Um, sometimes they have Kindle, Kindle editions. Um, a lot of times they don't have the Kindle edition. Uh, it, it, they're just very hard books to find. And I was able to find those books I was looking for on awesome um, books and uh, so I did do a few orders and the used books um, they ship them out like within 24 hours and they use and sort of the new books that I purchased from the site um, they started shipping out um, maybe three or four days later so uh, if you are from the UK or uh, if you're another from another country and you've ordered from awesome books uh, let me know if you're happy with the service or not, um, whether the used books are in good shape or not, etc. But um, yeah, I, I just was very happy to find it because I found books on there for a good price that I've been looking for for quite a while. So anyway, um, I will start um, the book haul here. So this is from Book Outlet and this is Starter Villain by John Scalzi, I think it's pronounced. Meet the new boss. I absolutely love this cover and yeah I don't know a lot about this book um, I just kind of want to go in without knowing too much it just says Inter inheriting your uncle's supervillain business is more complicated than you might think particularly when you discover who's running the place so I'm sure the cat's involved at some point here <laughs> maybe he's the new boss um, but yeah just a, an adorable cover there and then, uh, okay, she, uh, she has to clean her privates there while I'm filming. Oh, anyway, uh, Mildred's in the other room sleeping. So, um, Now this particular author, I wanted to read his books for a while and uh, I was able to find them at various sites. Um, I do have the first two books and then the fourth book. Um, I might have to go to Kindle to get the third book, uh, but it's by Oscar de Muriel, and this is the first book in the series, The String of Murder, and the second book is A Fever of the Blood, and this is the fourth one is uh, Lock of the Dead. So these take place in Scotland in the 1800s. Um, this first book takes place in Edinburgh, and this one takes place in the Scottish Highlands. And I love murder mysteries that take place in, um, you know, the 18th century in England or Wales, uh, Ireland, Scotland, you name it. I just love those type of books. So this follows a Scotland Yard in inspector, I think, believe... Oh, there's two inspectors, Frey and Nine Nails McRae. Uh, so they um, they do mis murder mysteries and that. So yeah, I'm hoping to get the the uh, third book, and I'm not 
can't remember quite offhand. There's might be seven books all together in this series, but they've gotten such good reviews, and that's the type of book I really, really enjoy reading. Alrighty, and then um, I did get some uh, cozy mysteries. Where did that other one go? Oh, it'll, it'll show up. Um, so this uh, first book, oh, where did that one go? Anyway, it, it'll show up. Um, these two books I got off of, I think it was Book Outlet, and this is the Dale's Detective series, and I believe the first book is um, Date with Death, and these are by Julia Chapman, and the second book is Date with Malice. So this um, Samson O'Brien, he's been dismissed from the police force, so he returns to his hometown in the Yorkshire Dales, and he sets up his own uh, detective agency. And then Delilah Metcalf is struggling to keep her business, the dating agency, afloat. And there's a murder, and I guess they work together to, to solve the, the murders and that. So I um, thought I would give those a try. And then uh, this is by Ellery, Ellery Adams, The Secret Book and Scone Society. And I know she's done other cozy mystery series. Um, I haven't read her books before. This is the first in this particular series, and it takes place in this um, small town. I guess a lot of tourists go there because there's this natural hot springs, um, and there's a spa there, and people go there to cure their ills and that sort of thing. And then there's a bookshop and bakery combination in the village also, and there's a murder and... Um, this group of uh, people are trying to solve the murder. Um, so yeah, that sounded quite good. Anything with a bookshop, I'm there. And then this one is The Body in the Back Garden by Mark Waddell. So this is a Canadian author, and this uh, story actually takes place on Vancouver Island. Uh, so this um, investigative, investigative journalist, um, he is uh, taking over his aunt's um, cottage on Vancouver Island. And uh, I believe um, his family has learned that he is gay and uh, they have rejected him. So he decides to move away and then take over his aunt's uh, cottage on Vancouver Island. And there is a murder and... Um, yeah, so looking forward to that one. And I did have another cozy mystery by a Canadian author, but it'll it'll pop up here in a minute. Alrighty, and then this is The Midnight House by Amanda Geard. And this is just a beautiful cover. So on Awesome Books, I have ordered another used book from her, The Moon the Moon Gate, I believe. And they just have beautiful, beautiful covers. So this is a dual timeline. So the first timeline is 1940 in Ireland. The beautiful Lady Charlotte is pronounced dead after she disappears near the lake. And then in 2019, uh, a journalist uh, flees a scandal in Dublin and she discovers an old letter tucked inside the pages of a book from Blackwater Hall where this lady had um, disappeared and she's trying to unravel uh, what happened. So that's the Midnight House. Oh and this this book, um, I've always seen it on Book Outlet and I never did order it. Um, and then they had this sort of special edition and I thought I'd pick it up and I didn't realize it was so, so small. It is so cute. That is Housekeeping by Mary Lynn Robinson and yeah it's like the size of my Hand. So yeah, I can just throw this in my purse when take up too much room. And um, I think it's about, uh, I think it's a, this young girl who is uh, raised by her grandmother and um, kind of a coming of age book, I guess. I really don't know too much about it. Um, but yeah, I thought that was such a cute little book. Alrighty. Um, Oh, this one here is uh, A Tip for the Hangman by Alison Epstein. And I just love the cover. So this takes place in um, 1585. Queen Elizabeth is uh, 
in power and this follows Christopher Marlowe. Now I have heard about him. He is a famous playwright around the time of Shakespeare. And uh, in this particular book, he is um, Queen Elizabeth's spy master, comes and visits him and wants to uh, recruit him. And um, yeah, I uh, don't, the, the synopsis is quite long, so I just thought I'd just go into it and just, um, without knowing too much. Uh, but yeah, I love history books. And then uh, these two books I picked up on Amazon by Linda Jones. And the first is The Gilded Cage, and the sequel is The Broken Vows. Uh, so this young woman is uh, sort of forced into this marriage by her brother uh, to an older uh, gentleman who's quite abusive, and, um, and just uh, her life and how she uh, copes with that. And um, yeah, there's a lot of secrets going around, and getting unrevealed, etc., etc., and that's just the sequel. Alrighty. Oh, here's my other cozy mystery. Um, this is Death by a, a Thousand Sips by Gretchen Rue, and I just finished the first book in the series, um, Steep to Death, and uh, she is a Canadian author from uh, the prairies of Canada, um, I think, was it Alberta? I think she's from. So the first book, uh, Phoebe moves uh, into her aunt's old mansion and she takes over her aunt's uh, bookshop bakery uh, after uh, she passes away. And she was very close to her aunt. Uh, she was like a second mother to her. And um, there is a, um, a murder and also there's a little bit of magical realism in here. It is called the Witch's Brew Mysteries. So yeah, I actually really enjoyed the first one. So um, found this on Book Outlet for a good price. And then this is by Jenny Colgan, Midnight at the Christmas Shop. And I've read a lot of Jenny Colgan. It's just one of those books where if I read a, like a heavy impact emotional novel and I just need something lighthearted, I always grab a Jenny Colgan book. And this is the second book in the series. Um, the first book was called The Christmas Bookshop. And it's about a young woman who takes over uh, this uh, bookshop for this um, older gentleman. And um, yeah, I really did like it. So yeah, I w didn't even know there was a second book in this series. So I'm glad I was able to grab that one. And then this is The Last Chance Library by Freya Sampson. And um, lonely librarian June Jones has never left the sleepy English village where she grew up. She's very shy and reclusive. And then her library is threatened with closure and she has to sort of step up and try to save her library. And then um, the community and that sort of helps her out in that. So um, yeah, I do, I do love like a uh, bookshop or library type of stories. Alrighty, and then this is by Ellen Marie Wiseman, The Life She Was Given. And uh, it takes place in 1931. Uh, so it follows this Depression era, era traveling circus and uh, ends in the 1950s. So I believe this young girl, her name is Lily, and she is kept in the attic of this house. Now, I don't know what's going on. I don't know the family dynamics, what's wrong with her. Uh, but anyway, she she ends up uh, in the circus anyhow. Um, yeah, I think there's a couple of uh, different timelines also. Yeah, there's two different timelines. So um, yeah, that one sounded pretty good. And then this one is The Weaver and the Witch Queen by Genevieve Gornacek. And yeah, this one takes place in Norway, 10th century Norway. So yeah, it's hard to find a book in that kind of time period. And it, this involves the Vikings and it follows a couple of um, young girls as they grow up. And it says the lies of two women one desperate to save her missing sister, the other a witch destined to become queen of Norway. 
intertwine in the spellbinding, powerful novel of Viking Age history and myth. So, yeah, I do uh, love reading uh, books about that time period. And uh, now this one uh, has been quite popular on BookTube. I know so, some of the BookTubers I do follow really do enjoy this book. And it's Bright Young Woman by Jessica Noel. So this follows the victims and the survivors of Ted Bundy, um, the notorious serial, serial killer. And his name's never mentioned in this particular book, we, but we know it is Ted Bundy. And just the trials and tribulations these survivors went through. It is a fictional account, uh, but it um, sort of goes over how the victims um, and the survivors weren't really taken seriously by police and um, how they feel that they weren't heard and how Ted Bunny could have been captured much sooner if they had listened to these people. And But I've heard it's, it's a really, really good book. Hi. Try to get comfy? Okay. Um, now this this is a special edition that I got on BookTube for seven ninety nine. Um, I do have the first book in this series. This is Daughter of the Siren Queen by Trisha Levenseller. Uh, the first book um, is Daughter of the Pirate Queen, but I don't have a special edition of that one because when it's on booklet it, book outlet it disappears really quickly. So it's just a really really beautiful cover and ooh, sprayed edges. I love it. Um, so yeah. Um, Got a nice little map inside here. So, yeah, um, I believe it is YA, but I um, love a good pirate book. And then this is The Paleontologist by Luke Dumas. And I love the cover. And this follows a paleontologist. Um, he returns to the museum where his sister was abducted years earlier and is faced with a terrifying and murderous spirit in this chilling novel. And now this one sounded quite intriguing. This is Hazardous Spirits by Anna Bera Salam. I just love the cover. So this takes place in 1920s Edinburgh, Scotland, and Evelyn is a young uh, housewife living the life she's always expected until her husband upends everything with a startling announcement. He can communicate with the dead. And so they're getting drawn into the spiritual movement. And um, yeah, there's just... Sounds just fascinating. I, I just, um, sounds so, so good. Can't wait to dive into that one. And then uh, I do love those spooky gothic house kind of videos. And this is uh, The House on the Orchard by Elizabeth Brooks. And this, um, so a World War II widow inherits a dilapidated English estate and she uncovers a diary written by an adolescent uh, girl, so she tries to unravel the mystery behind that. And I believe it's a dual timeline. So in 1876, Orphan Maud is forced to leave London and her brother to live with a stranger. And uh, yeah, it sounds like a spooky house kind of gothic tale. And um, this is The Light of Luna Park by Addison Armstrong. So this is sort of a medical history and being a retired nurse, I just love the medical history. So this takes place in New York City in 1926. Uh, this nurse, um, she's witnessing all these premature, um, premature baby deaths and she reads about incubators that are a kind of a new thing and she's trying to convince the doctors to try this because it's supposed to help with the survival of premature babies and she's getting a lot of um, resistance by the doctors and then a few years later her daughter um, after her mom passes away finds out what her mother had done in the past to help these so yeah I do love a um, good medical history book and um, this is The Protégé by Jody Gehrman I love the creepy cover there um, so the, it just follows a uh, uh, anthropology professor and forensics expert at this pre prestigious university and, um, and then one of her graduating students um, 
She's got her own agenda for some reason to take down this professor. Um, I don't know. I'm just going to go into it and go for a ride there. So, And uh, this is by Lisa Unger. This is Christmas present, so I'll just save this for Christmas time. And it's um, a true crime podcaster unwraps a bookseller's dark past in this chilling holiday mystery. So yeah, that's going to be a Christmas read for me. And I've heard very good things about this one. This is The Square of Sevens by Laura Shepard Robinson. Oh, it's a heavy book. Um, so it takes place in Cornwall in 1730. A young girl known only as Red travels with her father, making a living uh, predicting fortunes using the ancient Cornish method of the Square of Sevens. Shortly before he dies, her father... Um, and trust Red's care to a gentleman scholar along with the document containing the secret of the squares technique in that. So it follows her along. So that just sounds quite fascinating. And uh, another spooky gothic vibe was Unquiet by E. Saxe. And this takes place in London in 1893. So Judith lives a solitary life the maid who haunts the house in which she resides. She is mourning the death of her brother-in-law who drowned in an accident earlier. And then they're having some kind of ritual um, in her garden one night. And she discovers that her brother-in-law is actually alive, but he has no memory of what happened in the past year. And she's trying to figure out what's going on. So yeah, creepy vibes there. And then we're almost done. Um, this is The Last Lifeboat by Hazel Gaynor. So this follows um, two women in 1940 Kent and 1940 London. And um, they're tr helping to transport children to uh, Canada uh, just to keep the children safe. And a Nazi U-boat uh, torpedoes their ship. And there's a single lifeboat of survivors is left adrift in the storm-tossed um, Atlantic. And it follows um, what happens there. So, and uh, this one is "Her Little Flowers" by Shannon Morgan, and I love that cover. And uh, so Francine has lived all her 55 years in her family's ancestral home, a rambling Elizabethan manor in England's Lake District. Uh, no one else lives there. Um, they're ghost, homeless, and familiar. And, um, but then her estranged uh, sister shows up and uh, she brings a story that threatens everything Francine has ever believed in. And then this uh, is called Stolen by Anne Helen Lastadius. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right. And this uh, follows the Sami, which are a uh, nomadic uh, reindeer herding um, tribe and they're in like northern Finland and they sort of uh, are very nomadic and they travel with their reindeer the north of Finland and the USSR and that area and um, yeah I think there's a murder mystery here so yeah um, I have done a lot of reading about the Sami people and um, thought I'd pick that one up and then this is Salt Lane by William Shaw and this has gotten very good reviews. Um, so Detective Sergeant Alexandra is a recent transfer from the Metropolitan Police to the rugged Kentish countryside. And um, yeah, there is there is a murder mystery in that. But yeah, it's, again, it's like that small town village kind of murder mystery that I really, really enjoy. And then the last two books are by Karen Swan, and I saw these on Book Outlet. And I believe the first book is The Last Summer, and then this is The Stolen Hours. So this, um, it's loosely based on a true story. In 1930, uh, the residents of this island called, uh, what is it called now, Killed? Kilda. Um, it's a remote Scottish island and um, they're evacuated for whatever reason. Oh, my battery's exhausted.
Oh, sorry. My battery was exhausted. Well, so am I, and I keep going, like, you know. Um, anyway, take, uh, these take place on the island of um, Kilda. St. Kilda, I believe, and a uh, little bit of romance and just um, what these people's lives were like on this island. And so, all right, um, that's it. Uh, that is my little haul. So yes, I am um, waiting for the book arrivals from Awesome Books and I'll let you know how that went, how, what good is she? what kind of shape these used books are and uh, just how long the shipping takes and that sort of thing. But um, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to some of those books that I've been watching for quite a while. And again, if you've ordered from Awesome Books, let me know how things have gone. And um, yeah, I'm gonna go have uh, lunch and then take Abigail here and Mildred, wherever she is, uh, out for a little hike. And uh, so everyone take care and happy reading. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.